All right, in this video, we're gonna look at adding sound effects and music to our programs. And we're gonna start by downloading another library to work with SDL. It's the SDL Mixer 2.0. And so you can run a search for that and then click on this link. And again, we are looking for the development libraries for MinGW. So you can download that. Click inside and extract. And just as we did before, we're going to take the files from the mixer and bring them over into our standard SDL2 folder. So to do that, uh, we're looking for the x86. We go into the include SDL and copy the header file. Back out and place that in your SDL2 include folder. Then we go into the lib folder and copy these three files here. And paste those in the lib folder. And then into the bin folder. I click on type here to get all the DLLs together. And just make sure you get all of them. Copy. And again, we paste into the SDL2 bin folder. Don't forget to copy all of your DLL files, or at least the ones you haven't copied already, and paste them in the folder with your EXE. Now, to get started, you're going to need some audio. I created a folder for my audio, and I put in a few WAV files. But now that we have our files set up, we can modify our project properties. And in the linker here, you'll want to add this line right here. It is a dash L SDL2 underscore mixer. For the code, the first thing we need to do is include the new mixer. I'm gonna do this in my globals. Include SDL underscore mixer dot H. Then in main, after you initialize SDL, you can also initialize the mixer in a similar way. Here I'm just passing in a zero, but if you're wanting to use some other file types other than a WAV file, you may need to initialize those there. And you can look in the documentation and it will show you the different flags that are available. There's actually a couple more listed in the header file, which you can find by holding down control and clicking on the function call. You can or as many of these together as you want to, and then pass that in. But if you're not doing anything strange, if you're just using WAV files, go ahead and stick with a zero. All right, down in main, the first thing we need to do here is open the audio. So you can type in mix underscore open audio now we get four arguments here the first is going to be the frequency typically you want to use 44,100 the next argument is the format and you can do mix underscore default default format the next is do you want this to be mono or stereo? And typically you're gonna want stereo, so I'll put a two there. If you want mono, you put a one. And then the last argument is the chunk size. And this is about how big do you want the chunks to be? If you make it too small, your slower computers may not be able to keep up with it. And if you make it too big, then you may have lag between your sound effects. So. What they recommend is 1024. Our audio is up and running. We're going to add music and we're going to add one sound effect just to show how it works. So for the music, the data type is mix underscore music. And I just call it music. And to load your music in, you're gonna call mix underscore load muse uses all caps and then here you're going to put your file name 
I'm using that audio folder, so I type audio first and then the file name, which is awesomeness.wave for me. Don't forget your extension on the end. That loads our music. If you want to load sound effects, it's called a chunk. So mix underscore chunk, and I'll just call it sound equals mix underscore load wave. And you're going to use load wave for any data type, even if it's something other than a wave file. And my file is called miscellaneous menu wave. Now, if you want to do some error checking, you can put an if statement here for either one of these guys. If no music, see out an error. This is very handy for if you have misspelled your file name or something like that, this error will show up. And to get the error, we call mix underscore get error. And you can do something similar for the sound. You can leave this out if you want to. And then when you have problems, just come and put them in as needed. But now if I do have problems loading in either of those files, it will tell me about it. To play the music, we call mix underscore play music. And we get three arguments with play music. First, we get our music pointer, and then we get, or I'm sorry, we get two arguments, our music pointer, and then the number of loops. So if you, if you don't want it to loop at all, you put a zero there. And if you want it to loop indefinitely, you can put a negative one. And that should get the music playing. And we play sound effects in a similar way. I'm going to play a sound. I'm going to play this sound anytime the start button is clicked. So I'm going down here in my code to where my start button is clicked. And then to play the sound, it's mix play channel. And here we get three arguments. For the channel, you can put a negative one unless you want to specify a specific channel. Negative one will just take the first available channel. And then we get our chunk file, which I called sound. And then the last one is the number of loops. And we can put that at zero. So let's test this out. So that all works just fine. And that's how you get started with sound effects using SDL.